This morning, I will be providing information to you that will turn your term papers into professional documents. I talked a minute ago about how I work with authors to try to create professional manuscripts for them with their work. I want to do the same thing with you right now regarding your term papers. So by using these suggestions and tools, you will write better, more effective papers that will earn you higher grades. That's the point. In addition, if you apply these suggestions to all of your writing, especially on your jobs, you will be way ahead of the competition because you will have the professional edge. A lot of employers with whom I've consulted have told me that they have really good employees, but the one area where they're lacking is in their writing. So if you take what I'm about to tell you now and apply it to your writing, you'll raise yourself that much higher in the estimation of your employers, which can't be a bad thing. So in your term papers, you are to choose an appropriate topic from the fields of money, banking, and financial markets. You will write about the topic in an original, clear, and concise manner that convinces your readers that you are informed and impassioned about your subject. What you want to do is to find an interesting, relevant topic and present it in a well-written paper. Your term papers will be structured in three sections. There'll be an introduction, a development, and summary slash conclusion. Now I'm going to address each of these sections with you. The introduction starts with a thesis, sentence, or sentences. What this means is that you want to begin your paper by explaining what it will include. You want to be specific, and, you, and then you want to make sure that you address each point that you mention in your thesis sentences in the body of your paper. For example, you could begin your paper by saying, in this paper, I will show, and I'll just put a comma after in this paper because it's an introductory phrase. I will show, blah, 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 or I will demonstrate, or I will explain, and then go into detail about what it is that you're going to be writing about in the body of your paper. Let me give you an example here. In this paper, comma, I will show how the government of the city of Detroit has misused its funds, thus causing its residents to turn to crime to support themselves. So what's happening here is the writer is saying, in this paper, I will show what? How the government of the city of Detroit has misused its funds and what the result is, thus causing its citizens to turn to crime to support themselves. And then, what this person did was to actually go into detail in the body of the paper, in the development section, about just exactly what he said in his thesis sentence. Okay, let's, let's move on to the development section. What the development section does is to explain your thesis sentence or sentences in detail. You want to make sure that the points that you make have a beginning, a middle, and an end. This is where a lot of writers will fall down. What they will do is to only give a partial explanation of the points that they're making. Let's say that we're talking about a novel. The writer will start off by beginning to explain what the novel is about, but then not tell how it ends or leave out big chunks of it in the middle that are important that make 
that help the reader to understand what the ending means. So you don't want to do that. You want to be sure that you have a beginning, a middle, and an end in every point in the body of your paper. What you want to do is assume that your reader doesn't know anything about your subject. You have the knowledge base. You've done your research. You know your subject. Dr. Sace may know about it. He may not. I certainly don't. Now, because banking and finance are not my fields of expertise, somebody else who reads your paper might not have that knowledge base. So you want to explain your points as if the person knows nothing about your subject. Dr. Sace had a good analogy for it. He calls it the grandma approach. What you want to do is to pretend as if your grandmother is reading the paper. Now most grandmas don't really know that much about finance. Some do, some do, but not, not everyone does. But you want, what you want to do is pretend that your grandmother is reading the paper and you're explaining everything to her very basically. That's what you want to do in these papers. It helps in the development section to use what's called the inverted pyramid approach. What this means is that you put the most important information right at the top and then the rest of the paragraph gives more information in descending order from most important to least important. It's all important. It's all important because you're explaining a point. But what you want to do with the inverted pyramid is to start with that chunk, that element that really captures your point, your information. So you want to list those important things first, then the things that will explain these points from beginning to end. In the development section, you want to reflect your extensive research. And the more in-depth that this section is, the better. Let me give you some things that you can ask yourself about the development section. What are the highlights of the material that I've read? What are the most salient points? What are the major themes? What elements are the most important to the history, the current status, and the future of my subject? This is important because what you're going to be doing in your summary conclusion is to give Dr. Sace and me some of your opinions about your subject, about its current status and its future. And I'll get to that in a minute. What things made the greatest impression on me as I read my source material? Now, from your research, what reflects what you learned in class? Did something that you learned change your opinion? If so, why? So ultimately, what have I learned? What spoke especially to me? These are the kinds of things that you want to ask yourself and then write about in the, in the development section. That will make a really solid development section. A couple of other things on development. It's really important to write in your own words here. A lot of writers will fall down by starting their development sections off with a sentence of their own and then using huge chunks of direct quotes from their source material. Then they'll give another sentence of their own, then another huge chunk. This is not the way you want to write your paper. Papers like that are prayed down. Why? Because we're not seeing your work here. It's easy just to pick out a couple of sentences from a book and reprint them. That's not the point of a term paper. We want to see your work, what you think, what you learn. So you can use a few quotes, but use them very judiciously. The point is we want to see your writing, what you think. What you can do is, if you like what somebody else has said, you can paraphrase their writing.
Put it in your own words. But your own words are the point. Another thing is, please do not use footnotes in the development section of your paper. If something is important enough to include, just write about it in the body of your paper. Footnotes, in this case, are really extraneous. And we have a lot of papers to read, so we don't want to have to go back and forth the footnotes. So if you would not use them, we'd really appreciate that. The point is, whatever's in your development section should be important. It's not secondary information. You've only got X amount of words in your development section. So you want to pick the things that are the most important, that have the highest quality, quality level. Usually foot, footnoted material, endnote material, is not of that level. It's an aside. It's an addition. So that's my, that's my suggestion there. Now let's look at the summary conclusion. For me, this is the make it or break it part of the paper. Writers with weak conclusions just regurgitate the development section. They'll just say exactly what they said in the development in the conclusion. That's not what we want to see. You want to draw a conclusion about your research. You've done all this research, you've got opinions, we want to know what they are. What successful writers do is to, is to create conclusions that reflect their research while giving their opinions on the subject and assessing its current status and its future status. You want to summarize your main points and ask yourself, what have I learned from my research? What kinds of things are my subjects doing correctly? For example, if you're writing about a successful company, what have they done? That's right, that makes them successful. Conversely, what are they not doing? Or what have they done wrong that's led them to a downward spiral? What could they, in your opinion, be doing differently? Here's your chance to be creative. You have read this material. You know your subject now. You've got opinions. What are they? What could your company, if you're writing about a company, if you're writing about a bank, if you're writing about something in, in the market, what could they do differently to improve? And what do you project for this company or subject? based on your research. You learned material in class. You've read source material for your term paper. From that, talk about a projection for them. Answering these kinds of questions will help you to write informed and thoughtful term papers and to really build your conclusion into something good. Now I want to talk about how Dr. Sace and I assess the term papers. We look for content, clarity, approach, and presentation. First we check to see that the writer has followed our instructions. You've gotten what the parameters of the papers are, how many pages they are, double spaced, all that kind of stuff, so you know what that is. Then we look at the content. Is it solid? Is it clear? Is it well researched? Is the writing free of grammatical and spelling errors? Does the writer draw strong conclusions on his or her subject? Is the writer impassioned about his or her subject? We've read papers that have solid information but are really boring. They're just limp. Your paper should reflect your enthusiasm about your subject. You've chosen the subject for a reason, because you thought it was really interesting and worth, would be worth writing about. So we want, we want to feel that from you. Now, as I noted before, I look especially at the introductions and summary conclusion sections. 
Most writers are really good with the development section. But they fall down in these two other areas. They don't include thesis sentences and or conclusions. They don't present strong themes and thoughtful conclusions. Writers who fall down in the development section do so by not explaining their points. They just make a statement and don't follow through with more information into a logical conclusion. Don't do that. You want to explain your points all the way through. What these writers do is not give enough information to explain their statements and then bolster their points. You want to do that. Bolster your points. Now, I said a minute ago that presentation does not mean PowerPoint presentation. Remember that your current paper is more than just a rehash of their PowerPoint presentation. That's where a lot of writers make a mistake. Their term paper is just the same thing that they said in class when doing their PowerPoint. It's not. It's a different animal entirely. There's a relationship, certainly, but the term paper is much more in-depth. There's a lot more going on in it. What you want to do is to amplify your main points you want to go into detail about them and provide extensive information and finally end with a thoughtful conclusion. Your presentation here should be hitting the highlights of your term paper, your PowerPoint. It hits the highlights of your term paper. It is not your term paper. Now, let's talk about writing style in the term paper. Granted, this is not an English class. So we're not looking for you to be William Faulkner or Ernest Hemingway here. But what we are looking for is for you to be able to write correctly and well. A writer can follow instructions and present good information, but will fill his or her paper with spelling errors, grammatical errors, sentence fragments, Misuse of punctuation or not including any punctuation, which I've seen. And poor sentence structure. You can rectify these things right off the bat before you turn in your paper. Use spell check. Use grammar check. Use them all the time. Have a dictionary there. Have a Merriam-Webster. And check out any words that don't appear in spell check or grammar check. Because they don't, spell check or grammar check doesn't cover everything. If English is not your native language or if writing papers really isn't your forte, my suggestion is to run them by someone in the Student Writing Center in advance of turning them in. At the very least, have someone else read your paper before you turn it in. You know, like grandma approach. Have a friend read it, somebody else in class, or someone who knows nothing about the subject. Those people would be really valuable because they will say, I don't understand this point. What are you trying to say? Or you need to give more information here. Or you're talking about this one point way too much. Or your conclusion is weak. You're, you gave a great development, but you're not saying anything at the end. How do you feel about your subject? That kind of thing. So having somebody else look at your paper is really great. Another suggestion is to read your paper aloud before you turn it in. You will be amazed at what jumps out at you. If you have a hard time reading your paper aloud, chances are Dr. Sace or me or whomever else reads your paper will have the same difficulty. We will stumble with our eyes on the same things that you stumble over when you're reading aloud. Trust me, this works. This really, really works. We do this every month we with our month. monthly column. We sit yeah. there and we read through it after we've done about five levels of editing. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, and then, you do and your own editing. Then we still catch I more. There, right? Yeah, yeah and it, John, will, uh, John and I will have 
what we think is pretty much a done document. We'll read through it and we'll change quite a bit of it oftentimes. We'll add more things. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll, we'll see. Sometimes it's just a word here, a word right. there, or something. Things that make you grimace, like I said that, <laughs> and, you know, yeah. and it happens. You know, it's, it's, yeah. It does. A lot of writers will lack focus in their papers. They'll have good information, but it will be spread out all over the paper. What you want to do is to organize your information thematically. Keep like points together. What really helps in keeping these elements together is to do an outline even before you write your paper. You know what you want to say, just put like bullet points of how you want the information to flow and what, and what kind of order you want it in and try to group everything together that's alike. That will really help. That will keep the flow going very well. Now finally, what you want to do is, is to impress your readers with your mastery of the topic and your thoughtful reflections on this topic. Reflections that are both original and personal. Let me say that again. You want to impress your readers with your mastery of the topic and your thoughtful reflections on it, reflections that are both original and personal.